Hey everybody, how's it going? Oh, it's great to be here today. I am feeling a little sleepy. Um, my wife and I were out very late last night, way past our bedtime. So I am feeling a little sleepy today. It's a sleepy Saturday. Um, but I was happy that I had some time to get into some platinum with you all. Um, because now that we've beaten the sixth gym leader, we, we made pretty quick and easy work of Byron here. Even though he's one of my favorite gym leaders, he is not particularly challenging. Um, but now that we've defeated Byron, we are really going to start getting into some, uh, some of the cooler story stuff that this game has to offer. So I'm excited to get into that today. And of course, we added a couple new team members last time. We do have Autumn, the Torterra. We added uh, Breakfast, the now Togekiss. Um, we evolved our Togetic. Um, we've got Static, the Magneton, our last Pokemon that we need to evolve. Pikachu, the Vaporeon. Hot to go, also just evolved after the uh, gym battle. Our Croagunk evolved into Toxicroak, looking a bit more pointy, a bit more uh, aggressive now. And then, of course, uh, Karen, the Houndoom. Uh, locking things down with that fire blast. Um, <laughs> we are gonna fight some coconut hair terrace, Brody. You are so right. And I love this little way that we can go um, back through the cantilave gym. This one especially, like, look down below. Like, look at all of the layers of the gym. I just love to see it. Like, you can see the first floor super clearly right there. Um, I just love this gym. It's so cool to me, um, and blew my mind as a kid. It's delightful. And now we take this red one all the way back down. And we're done. So, um, once we pop out here, we're actually going to get to one of my favorite kind of story moments of the entire game. Um, as you can see, we have our friend GCG sitting here. He says, oh, you got the mind badge. That's cool. But... He wants us to go with him to the library. Oh, just get more of that beautiful music. Just gotta appreciate this a little bit. Hmm. So, so good. Um, oh, bro, do you thought Toxicroak was fighting dark? I mean, that makes sense. Um, um, yeah, always just fighting poison. But fighting dark works too. If it had a third type, it would probably be dark. Um, all right, so as we can see, our friend GCG is sitting here in front of the Cantilave Library. And I love the vibes in here. Kind of like, it really kind of gives old wise library with a lot of different kind of books. The ceiling high bookshelves are crammed with books. Um, and you, you feel like there's a lot of lore stored here at the Cantilave Library. And I want to point this cutscene out because here we're going to talk with Dawn and Rowan and I just love how the camera just shifts and the characters are kind of on the third line there. It just adds a sense of, I don't know, just kind of gravitas, kind of like epicness. It's such a subtle thing. But just when that camera shifts, you're like, ooh, it's story time. Like, this is just so cool and so simple. Um, and just little things like that can really um, step things up. So let's see what he has to say. All right, Gramps, I brought SCG, like I said. All right, I'll be out of here. <laughs> and Rowan's just like, uh, you got to stay. And he's like, okay, I get it, I get it. I'll stay too. All right, everyone's finally here. SCG, everyone, listen. You may have forgotten already, but I study the evolution of Pokemon. Ooh, he steps away. But the more I study, the more mysteries appear and multiply. Pokemon that evolve and those that don't? What makes them different from each other? Do those that are immature as living beings evolve to ones more mature? If so, what do we make of the legendary Pokemon that don't evolve? Are we to assume that the legendary Pokemon are complete as creatures? Hmm. This is where you three come in. In the three lakes of Sinnoh, there are said to be Mirage Pokemon. If we can obtain data on them, it may shed some light on how the process of Pokemon evolution works. I need help from each one of you on this grand undertaking. Help me find these Pokemon 
Pokemon that are considered to be mirages. We've talked a little bit about these. They're at the lakes. Um, because especially at the beginning of the game, we talked about the lake spirit. Cyrus was kind of talking about it. <clears throat> what are you saying? I didn't get a Pokedex. <laughs> and who was it that bolted from the lab before I had a chance to give you a Pokedex? But that's water under the bridge. Seeing Pokemon with your own eyes is important for you in becoming a better trainer too. You can count on me. It will help with my Pokedex too. So you'll go too, won't you? Hmm. I would have made all of you go regardless. <laughs> anyway. All right, so now we're gonna kind of divide and conquer. There are three lakes in the Sinnoh region. Um, lake Verity is right near um, uh, Twin Leaf Town, where we grow, where we grew up. Lake Valor is close to Pastoria City. We've passed that. Uh, the one we have not been to is Lake Acuity, and that is to the cold north of Sinnoh. Dawn's going to Lake Verity, and. Uh, GCG is going to Lake Acuity, the one that we have not been to yet. Um, yeah, of course, you know how to call it, Gramps. Um, and then we are supposed to go check out um, Lake Valor, of course, because there's only one left. Um, yes, the lake is between Valesone of Pasto and Pastoria, if memory serves. Whoa. So then there's another huge explosion, kind of like there was at the Great Marsh. And another one of my favorite things is about to happen when they go outside. Um, so on the news, you can see the fire and smoke is uh, billowing out from Lake Valor, from where the explosion was. And then, oh, okay. <laughs> what you've just witnessed is actual footage from the scene. It was taken by a cameraman who happened to be there. It's certainly impressive. Who knows what the explosion could expose at the lake. Um, so they said it was an explosion, and Rowan's like, Oh, is that Lake Valor? We gotta go outside. I love what happens here. Look at this. Woo! <laughs> I... This is another one of those simple things. I just love how they all kind of like spread out, and GCG runs, but they walk calmly. It's like just a little weird piece of choreography that's really uh, satisfying to me. Um, anyway. Um, oh yeah, you're right, Brody. Toxicroak only really gets Poison Jab. Um, I mean, terrorists are impressive news, it's true. All right, so honestly, that trip to the Cantilever Library is one of my favorite parts of the game. It is just a really cool like little story moment. And it's kind of like from this point forward, that is when the story really steps up. The Canalay Library visit is kind of like the gateway to that. Ah, um, uh, yes. So this guy is saying, they're saying there's a huge explosion at Lake Valor. So everything is fine. Because, you know, this is a children's game. Nobody's dying here. Um, all right. So now I'm pretty sure here, yes, we got a... We need to uh, investigate Lake Valor. So we're gonna fly over there just as just as soon as we can. But let me go ahead and heal the squad before we do that. Um, so this is really exciting. I love this part of the game. How are we doing today? I don't think I asked everybody how we're, how we're doing so far. Um, like I said, we, we were up way later than <laughs> we're usually up. Um, but it's been a really good day. Um, so far. I'm glad that we didn't have to sleep in too well. What am I doing running? We can just fly. Um, <laughs> yeah, we are the ones that do most of the heavy lifting. You're very, you're very right about that. Um, so let's fly to Pastoria City. Ooh, that cry is pretty cool, I will say. All right, so here, here we are back in Pastoria. Um, I gotta remember that we do have some trainers there near Heart Home City if we need to do a little extra training. But I think our squad's in pretty good shape. Um, doing that just little bit of soft grinding in um, Iron Island was gonna is helpful. Alright, so let's just do that super repel. Because there's gonna be a little more grass by Lake Valor. Hopefully we don't run out, but we got plenty. So now we gotta run back here. Ooh, something I can do. I'm pretty sure I can snag like a little rare candy or something over here. Lovely. Ah! Ah, no, it just leads to a rock climb spot. 
Still can't rock climb. Just tons of little cliffs here by these villas. There we go. Um, we do not have metronome on breakfast anymore, Brody. I got rid of metronome for ancient power. I just thought that'd be a little more consistent. And it will use our serene grace ability um, more effectively, which I think will be cool. All right. So now we're about to pop into Lake Valor. I will save the game. We're going to see the damage that has been done here. So when we go in here... We hear some Team Galactic music because Team Galactic foolery, Tom Foolery is afoot. And as you can see, oh, the poor Magikarp. They're just flopping around because they blasted all the water out of the lake. Oh, what terrible, terrible people would do this to these Magikarp. Oh, it's weakly flopping about. Oh, poor little guy. But don't worry, we'll take care of things, buddy. Um, is there an item maybe? Oh, there should definitely be an item over here. All right. I don't... Yeah, I didn't think we fought, fought this guy. Ooh. Next stop, Lake Verity. All right. So let's start... Uh, let's start wrecking these fools. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Once... Uh, once Grodel evolves and gets Earthquake, things just get real for this Pokemon. Um, Murkrow is not great, though. Let's go into Static. Ah, if we play our cards right, Static should be evolving this episode as well. Um, so that'll be really cool. Perfect. Um, great. So we can see a little bit more of the devastation here. As you can see, there's a bunch of Magikarp just kind of blocking the way here. Oh, worthless, all of them. Come on, man. Don't you know about Gyarados? All right. Um. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That is actually a good point, Brody. Um. All right. Uh, we'll just keep lead. We'll just keep leading Torterra. That's all good. Torterra and Breakfast are still pretty good leads. Uh, not against the Golbat, however. Static it is. Um, Thunder will do the trick, implying we don't hurt ourselves. Perfect. Thank you, Magneton. Lovely. Mm. All right. So we got to take care of a few more grunts here. Um, we'll put breakfast in front. Breakfast is going to be just a little more... A little more versatile. Um, oh, this guy's got four. And Fly is going to be great on a Crow Gunk, even though it got the critical hit Sucker Punch. Stunky will stay in. Yeah, Breakfast's physical attack is not going to be its best stat, so Return might be something we get rid of at some point soon. Um, let's see. Yeah, Hound Hour is an easy one shot with Surf. And then Glam Meow. We'll just stay in. Can probably one shot it again. Oh, it did lower our special attack. No matter. Perfect. Um. Alright. Yeah, some some of those battles I'll just kind of continue to speed through. I mean, there was nothing too particularly threatening there. Um. -do -do -do. Oh, I do have Moo Moo Milk. I'll get breakfast and Moo Moo Milk. Um, <laughs> that is your uh, thesis on why we should keep metronome on breakfast. In short, it's funny. Do we fight this guy? No, we don't. Um, it is interesting. Um, right now, um, hold on, let me see. Um, I live in Columbus, Ohio, the, the Columbus, Ohio area, and I went to Ohio State. The Ohio State Buckeyes are actually in a really big game with Penn State today, and it should have started, actually. But it looks like it's not showing up right now. Um, maybe. Sorry, I just got sidetracked. I saw that I got an ESPN update on my phone. 
And I'm like, what's the score? And it's not loading. I'll look it up later. Let's lock in, gang. Um, I will save the game. We'll keep breakfast in front. Ooh, actually, no, we won't, because I'll tell you why later. Um, Pikachu. Pikachu's good lead. All right. So now we're gonna pop in here to the mysterious Valor Cavern in the middle of the lake. And if you recall, we have already battled um, the Galactic Commanders Mars and Jupiter. Jupiter, this is the third Galactic Commander. This is Saturn. Ah, everything is for everyone and for the good of Team Galactic. Ooh, and Saturn's got a cool little pointy haircut. Kind of looks like the devil. Um, <laughs> And this guy's like, you should be ashamed of herself for losing to... Jupiter should be ashamed of herself for losing to you. But uh, now we're fighting Saturn. And like I said, he's got that cool devil haircut. And they all have very distinct uh, hair colors. Jupiter's got the purple, Mars has got the red, and Saturn's got the blue. Um, I also really like this trio of... Team Galactic Commanders because they each have their own distinct ace Pokemon. For Mars, you have Perugly. For Jupiter, you have Skuntank. And as you're going to see, Saturn's ace is actually a Toxicroak, which I think is one of the reasons why I have never really used one in a playthrough until now because I would always see it on Saturn and maybe it felt like an evil Pokemon. You get it later in the game. But uh, yes, here is Saturn's Toxicroak. I really like this trio of Galactic Commanders. I think they did a really cool thing um, story-wise with them. Let's see. You know, I actually, Brody, that is interesting that you say that. I know a lot of people didn't really know if Saturn was a boy or a girl, um, but that is not something that I ever thought about. That's, that's kind of like something new. Oh, wow, that didn't do a lot of damage. Um, but, uh, yeah, a lot of people confuse Saturn for a boy or a girl. But I always just thought Saturn was a boy, and I think I'm pretty sure he is, right? Um, oh, what I wouldn't do for a psychic move right now. Um, as a matter of fact, we're actually not going to be able to tank that very well. And if he is going to use Poison Jab... Ooh, he withdrew Toxicroak. My goodness. Making pro plays over here. I'm switching as well. All right, all right. Steel on steel. Um, I'm pretty sure at this point in the game, all three commanders have um, a Golbat and a Bronzor to go with their um, signature ace Pokemon. That is one thing about these games that I just really enjoy is that all of the main characters have like their own signature Pokemon that only they use and it just makes them really special. Um, and that is such like a cool, um, uh, when you think about kids playing these games, like that is such a cool like imagination piece um, of it all. Let's see, Toxicroak, I was gonna swap into Static here. Um, Let's see... Oh, no. Karen's not good. Might have dry skin. If Torterra can live a poison jab, we should be able to knock it out with Earthquake. Um, <laughs> let's see. Is this going to be... Okay, no. It's only, it's only neutral. Um... The, our, our ground type is going to neutralize that poison. I actually couldn't remember. That's interesting. So this should do the trick. And it does. Good job, Torterra. And you'll hit 36 as a result. Lovely. And with that, we've defeated Commander Saturn. You, my friend, are tough. All right. Let's see what else is going on. Ah, even I, a commander, only managed to buy us time, but that's fine. A child like you will never be able to stem the flow of time. Team Galactic will get the three legendary Pokemon of the lake. With their power, we will create an entirely new universe. By now, Mars should be captured, should have captured, the Pokemon of Lake Verity. Ooh. 
So we have this cool kind of like water design in here. And we'll worry about that later. Um, interestingly, so he's talking about um, Mars being at Lake Vary. So it seems like we are going to want to hop over there. So we'll actually go to Sand Gem Town so we can heal the squad real quick. Oh, I love this little Team Galactic business. This is some of my favorite, kind of like the the Valor Explosion Fallout is, is one of my favorite parts of the game. Really, really this whole stretch from after you beat Byron is where, you know, I've said it a bunch of times at this point, but I just want to reiterate, this is where the story is, where the story gets good. All right. And now we're kind of going back to where it all started. Oops, not yet. I will, I will polish our badges this episode, though. Um, we haven't had them polished in a while. They're probably dirty. All right. So, uh, Valor Lakefront is in shambles. Rowan is here with Dawn. We're trying to, we're trying to fight off the galactic goons here. We got a couple double battles we got to take care of. Let's get Karen in the front. Breakfast and Karen. I love this. I love this set. Perfect. Let's do it. They haven't ex they haven't exploded Lake Verity yet, um, thankfully. All right, we should we should be we should be pretty okay here. Let's let's give Glamio a bite. Hopefully, you can get that flinch. There we go. Oops. We did lower Karen's accuracy. We're able to knock it out with Fly. Ah, yes. So one of the trainers only had one Pokemon, so we are sitting pretty. Oh, nice. Oh, and we got that Omni Boost. That's that Serene Grace going that I was talking about. Um, so I'll just go ahead and use Return and Fire Fang. That should be. There we go. I mean, the badge polishing is is the main event of this game. I, I feel like anybody watching this stream right now just, just wants to see me polish up our badges. Um, and as a matter of fact, you know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it right now. We are in the middle of fighting a terrorist organization, but our badges are dirty. So we gotta polish them up. Um, but, oh, and I can show off our new mine badge. You know, this, yeah, the story comes after badge polishing. Because, like, look, they're all dirty and blue and dark. we got to get some shine. So here's our new badge, the Mine Badge. This game is actually pretty interesting. Um, because this is the first time, I think, that the badges really had a... Kind of like a stylistic change in the series. Um, I feel like these are all kind of a bit more... Um, I don't know how to describe it. Kind of like a bit more congruent design-wise. Like they're all, they're a bit more, they're a bit lighter. They're not quite as colorful. They're kind of washed out a little bit. Um, and you'll see like other games in the series kind of do that too. Where the first three games in the series, they, a lot of the badges have more of a distinct personality. But these feel a little bit more... Just a little bit more similar to each other, a little bit more congruent, um, just kind of more circular generally. Um, um, but some of them, some of the badges in the rest of the series does this even more so. Um, so now our badges are good. Ba ba. We'll get those later. Um, hello, Glacials. Good to see you. <laughs> yes, anything less is unacceptable. Um, perfect. So now we are all polished. So now we can get back to fighting the terrorists. Um, so we'll, we'll roll to we will roll Togekiss here. Um, Togekiss and Houndoom once again. Pretty formidable duo. Um, Ancient Power U... And we will we'll just fire blast you. We won't even won't even mess around. Yeah, having ancient power on breakfast is really nice. Having that uh, rock type coverage is is really good. Um, we will only have two for um, Mars, but that's okay. Oh, didn't quite knock it out. Okay. And then a return. 
turn. That'll do the trick. Boom, baby. All right, so Mars, I believe, is going to open with a Golbat. So let's let's get Static up in here. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Badge polishing simulator is so funny. It's also funny because I'm, I'm just doing it with my mouse. So I'm kind of like shaking <laughs> my camera as it goes a little bit. Um, let's see. All right. So we got to help our friend Dawn. We got to fight Mars. And I will say... Mars is definitely my favorite of the commanders. I think she's really cool. She's the first one you fight. That Perugly fight for me was iconic as a kid. Um, you get to fight her again here. Um, get to save your friend Dawn. I really like Mars. Um, I know I have expressed that before, but Mars is definitely my fave. Um, badge polishing simulator, that's so funny. Um, all right, let's knock this, uh, let's knock this fool out. Ah, uh, Dawn over Barry. I mean, I don't, uh, I don't disagree. Dawn does have a delightful little hat. Barry doesn't have a hat. Oh, and for those of you wondering, um, uh, ba 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 ba. They just mentioned Barry. Barry is the canonical name of your rival, like the blonde-haired kid that we call GCG. Um. Uh, yes, Karen for Bronze Orb. Perfect. That is true. That is true. Dawn, Dawn doesn't really worry about your timeliness. Um, Dawn is just, is just here to have a good time. Wow, I feel like I have never really used those early powerful TMs that you can grab in Veilstone City. Having Fire Blast on Karen has just been great. <laughs> Excuse me, and so useful. Sometimes I don't like to use super powerful TMs early. I don't know. I don't know why. Um, it can just feel a little cheap to me sometimes. Ooh! Now we get to use... Um, ooh! We get to use Saturn's Ace against Mars's Ace. Ugh! Man, Perugly really is ugly, man. That is an ugly cat. Oh, another thing about Perugly, it does... Jeez, okay, I had to have been a critical hit. That's insane. Oh! I forgot that it knows hypnosis. That's annoying. Um, another thing about Perugly is that it is sneaky super fast. Um, it does not look like it would be super fast, but it is. Um, it's kind of like, it's kind of like Miltank in that way. Um, let's see. <laughs> yes. In early Platinum, it was Flamethrower, Fire Blast, no in-between. Um, you did say Dawn was a Karen, that's true. Oh my gosh, with the hypnosis here, guys. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to stay in with Torterra, though, and not die. Because we got those Leech Seeds up. As long as we don't get too many crits with Slash, I think we can still live one from here. Maybe not now, though. Let's swap again. This is annoying. And that's why you want that leech seed, baby. This is just a little slumber party. Just a little slumber party. Everybody's going to sleep. This is so stupid. Um, yes, yes, that was it, Glacial. Um, Perugly has a higher speed stat than Rayquaza. Which is crazy. Thank you for pointing that out, Glacial. I gotta, I gotta cite Glacial there. Um, let's see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Rayquaza is essentially a god, but this uh, this here fat cat is faster. And we're just gonna end up Leech Seed stalling her. Well, not. All right. All right, finally, this should do it. Perfect, my goodness. Sorry, Pikachu, that you got the short end of the stick there. All right, finally defeat Commander Mars. I mean, that Perugly, no joke. Again and again. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, like, if you just stretched Rayquaza out, it would just be 100 meters. Um, 
Ugh, first the wind works and now Lake Barity that I owe you for. This shouldn't be happening to Team Galactic's commander. Whew. Calm down, Mars. I've done my part in all of this. My mission was to transport the lake's Pokemon to our HQ. That's right. I accomplished my mission without a problem. Team, we're pulling out. The boss is waiting at the HQ. Mm. Ooh, Mesprit. So here she name drops the lake Pokemon that is at Lake Verity. It's called Mesprit. Um, and that uh, they were able to catch it, which is really sad, and they have it trapped in their HQ. Mesprit is the being of emotion. Azelf, Mesprit's friend, is the being of willpower. And Uxie, uh, Mesprit's other friend, is the being of intelligence. This is a very important trio in the Sinnoh region. And now Team Galactic has them all. So we'll see what that means. That could be scary. All right. Let's see. B B I love Rowan's self-awareness here. He's like, hi, you're kids and you just defeated criminals. That's pretty cool. Pat yourselves on the back. Um, but what about GCG? What is ha happening at Lake Acuity? Is GCG safe? So now is the point of the game where we have to head to Lake Acuity. And to get there, it is all the way up here by Snow Point City, Acuity Lakefront, as you can see. So the highest point in the Sinnoh region we have been so far is Eterna City and Celestic Town over here. And we will actually be able to access this route, Route 216, that is going to get us to Lake Acuity and Snow Point City. But it is a very, uh, very treacherous way. So we'll see. So the Team Galactic stuff kind of takes a little pause. Um, uh, only technically, because we are still um, inspecting what's going down um, up at Lake Acuity, where GCG is. But there is another gym up there, kind of while we're at it, you know? Um, we'll save the game here. Yes, perfect. Yeah, Dawn's not the best Pokemon trainer in the world. But, uh, you know, like we said, she brings the good vibes. She definitely brings something to the table. Charisma, mostly. Um, let's see. Oh, your only problem with the Pokemon world is the Elite Four. The region is being taken over by villains, and uh, wh where are the ones deemed to be the region's strongest? That is such a good point. Um... There's actually another game in the series um, that I won't spoil yet, where you actually do get another, like a little bit more, uh, what's the word, participation from some of the main trainers in the region. I won't spoil it um, because it's a cool moment, but uh, we'll get there. So we have a few trainers here that we can battle on our way to um, the route that takes us up to Snow Point City. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a little bit of a rock climb puzzle. There we go. This lady's just got a knockdown. We can hit it with a blizzard. Should be pretty easy peasy. Might not knock it out. Ah, not quite. Ah, but we get the freeze. Perfect. Quick attack. Bye. All right. Um, dude, the animated short does make it better. Yes. And obviously. I have an awareness that most of the people that watch, uh, that have been watching my Pokemon Let's Plays here do know what happens in all the other Pokemon games, but I really do like to present it as if it's new information. I think that could be fun for people, and I always try to, um, uh, what you call it, just try to make it fresh for people who have genuinely never played the games before. Um, I think there's a trainer down there I skipped. Um, is that going to do anything? No. I'll have to switch to Karen here for this Bronzor. It's like I was saying last episode, Bronzor, specifically in Diamond and Pearl, is a really sneaky, tough adversary just because there are no Fire-type Pokemon in the region. Um, but here, of course, we have Karen the Hound, too. Um, 
<laughs> yes, that is the best part of that glacial. You're so right. Um, oh, you don't. You, you've never played Sun and Moon or X or Y. Did I? Did I know that, Brody? <laughs> this guy's like, I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm strong. He's really trying to manifest being a strong trainer, and he gives us this little TM for a move called Psych Up, which this guy's psyching himself up. Um, and what it does if your opponent. Uh, raises their stats, you can copy those stat changes. And he, here, is trying to explain that to us um, with the move Harden. Um, okay, sorry, I just accidentally talked to you again. Okay. I think there's a trainer down here. There's a ninja boy up there. Yes. Oh, and there's an item there as well. Yes, I do not have a dedicated cut Pokemon right now. Uh, I will have to teach a Pokemon Strength, which does annoy me, but what can you do? Um, you've played Gens 1 through 5 and 8 and 9. Brody, I highly recommend uh, 6 and 7. I mean, I think I was saying maybe last episode that 6 and 7 is my... Or that 6, rather, is one of my least favorite Pokemon games. But I still recommend them all. I still love all Pokemon games, man. They're always fun for me. Um, a choke will stay in with breakfast. We got that fly going. Um... Breakfast does has have access to a new Generation 4 move called Air Slash. And we can only teach it to Breakfast with a heart scale. And we will want to teach it eventually because it does have a much higher special attack stat than uh, attack stat, which is what Fly uses. So again, we're going to want to use Air Slash. But Fly is just so useful throughout, like, the general playthrough of the game that I don't want to get rid of it yet. That'll be our flying move for the foreseeable future. Um, let's see, where is Static? Okay, I'm gonna open with Static here. Against this ninja boy. Um, okay, Glacial, you're so right. I love... And I mean, you're going to want to play Gen 6 with Legends of ZA coming out. Um, and I have always said, I think that Generation 7 is the most underrated Pokemon game. And I know people, Brody, I know you've talked about the tutorials and whatnot, but I just think the tutorialness of Generation 7 is a little bit overstated. Um, oh my gosh, Oras, also great. Very, very great. Um, all right. So, this here is Mount Coronet. Um, we have been in here before. We're actually just gonna have to go to a different spot in here. And we'll pick up a couple of these items. We can rock smash around. This is where we're gonna have to teach somebody strength. And I might need to get rid of a move I don't really want to get rid of, but it's okay. That's kind of part of the deal with Generation 4. There are just so many HMs that you have to end up teaching that you're definitely going to have to teach more than you want to. And I'm probably going to teach Strength to Hot to Go um, right now. Because probably the set I'll end up using, we can have Rock Smash and Strength with another fighting move and another good poison move. That'll probably be Hot to Go's uh, move set. Might not be the best coverage Pokemon of all time, but, uh, you know, sometimes you have to make sacrifices on your playthrough team just to have those HMs ready. Um, I guess you don't have to, but it does make things a lot more convenient. Um, let's see. Oh, wow. So you have so many of these games, Brody. You just haven't played them. That's very cool. That's very interesting. Um, but what I'm going to do here with our friend Magneton, we do have to run out our, um, repel here. Pick up this item here. Oh, rock polish. Very nice. Um, so, I hop down this ledge. If you recall, this actually leads to Eterna City. So this is a different part of the game. Um, I think 
I really kind of spoke about the kind of big mysterious Mount Coronet um, when we got to this part. Um, but we weren't able to access some of the other parts of it yet because we had to either have strength or be able to have access to whatchamacallit, um, Celestic Town, and, hold on, okay, cool, sorry, I see I'm dropping a few frames in OBS, let me save the game really quick, chilling for a second. Um, give me one mom gang. Usually my connection's quite reliable, but every now and then, every now and then it's not. Mm. Hold on. We're going to just take a quick pause. Um, I was hoping we would be stabilizing here a little bit, but it looks like we might not be able to, um, yeah, it looks like we're 
gonna have to pause the stream for today. Um, sorry about this, guys. I am happy we were able to kind of get into the Team Galactic stuff um, today. I'll take care of this here, Metatite. Yeah. All right, folks. I'm going to call this. Sorry that uh, my internet is being a little worse than usual. Um, oh, frog or fox? Ooh. I mean, Brody, if you're talking about X and Y. Yeah, I mean, frog's a great pick. Um, guys, thanks for being here today. Um, I'm sorry that we're kind of having to cut it short here. But next time, we will be doing some big stuff. We'll be heading up to Snow Point City, and we'll be checking in on our friend GCG. Um, but, yes, with that, <laughs> I will see you all this upcoming week. Have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you, Glacial. Thanks for stopping in. Um, I'll see you all later. All right, thanks, guys. Peace, kids.